Well, good morning or good evening, everybody. We welcome you to our presentation today on BASIS International School Hangzhou. We're excited to share some insights with you about uh, what we have going on at our school in Hangzhou, as well as some insights on the career opportunities that we do have uh, uh, at our school. Uh, today, we're, we're excited to hear from a number of individuals at our school. We'll be hearing from uh, Kira Galis, who is the head of school, Dr. Bryn James, who is the vice head of school and head of high school. We'll be hearing from Shauna Sterling, who's the vice head of primary, as well as uh, Saba Amir, who is uh, one of the new teachers that has joined us just this year. My name is Tim Smith. I'm the vice president of global talent for Basis International Schools. And we'll also be joined by one of my colleagues, Leila Oskui, who's the international recruitment team lead and works directly with our school in Hangzhou. In terms of what we'll be covering, we'll be speaking again, focus is on Basis International School Hangzhou today. Um, we'll be hearing from the individuals I just mentioned. And in, in addition to that, we'll also share some insights about the Basis International Schools Network as a whole. Some things are important in working with us and our organization, some things that uh, we think are uh, um, uh, insightful and useful to know about who we are. And then we'll also touch on some of the key benefits, some of the visa requirements um, in considering an opportunity with our schools in China specifically. Lastly, we do have a QA and a uh, time at the end of, of the presentation. So if you do have any questions along the way, please use the Q&A functionality. It's in the menu. Typically, it's going to show at the bottom of your screen. You can type in your question at any point during the presentation and then we'll answer all of the questions uh, at the end. So to start off, it gets to be my pleasure to introduce Kira. Kira is the head of school at Basis International School Hangzhou. So Kira, we appreciate you joining us today. We're excited to hear about uh, Hangzhou, all you have going in there, uh, going on there in your school and um, uh, looking forward to hearing some of what you have to share. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me and welcome to everyone who's joined today. I can I can say that the team of people who are going to speak with you today are very passionate about education and um, they have some incredible things to share with you. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I have been in the BASIS Network now. Um, this is my fourth year as head of school and um, it's exciting to be working in a thriving network where you have other heads of schools and and other um, very quality professionals to lean on and to to um, glean from. And so I just wanted to to put that that information out there in the beginning. I'm a little bit more about me. I'm a wife, I'm a mother, um, I'm a coach, I'm an instructional leader. There's so many things that I could say about myself. But um, the key for me is truly um, working with professionals that have a growth mindset because it's very, very important to me that in our school, um, that we have really strong satisfaction surveys. And it's really important to me that we are building a very strong learning com community with uh, an organizational culture uh, that is based on what I call the three C's. So here at our school, you can pass it on to the next slide. Um, in our school, we talk a lot about the three C's and um, about collegiality, and congeniality and collaboration. And, you know, it, it. sometimes I think, you know, oh, Kira, it sounds kind of corny, you know, collegiality, congeniality, and collaboration. But to be honest, it's something that we, uh, we live and breathe here. And when our teachers come in um, to our school, it's like, they're smiling at each other and they're, they're happy. And it's really important to us that we have that that atmosphere where people actually are greeting one another or are nice to nice nice to each other and then that you also take that moment of helping one another and being collegial when there's things that happen in people's lives that are important that we celebrate but it also moves into that form of collaboration because we're we're looking at data we're looking at you know students and the depth of what our students need and collaborating so that our students can um, be be successful so it's really really a part of a big part of what we do here at our school. And I'm I'm excited about that. I believe that the people who will speak with you today um, model this three C's in their life. And that's reason, the reason that they're actually speaking with you today. Um, but one of the things that we've seen because of the three C's is a really strong, strong teacher satisfaction surveys. Um, this last this last survey round, we had 97% of our teachers who um, said this was a good place to work. And I think, um, you know, it's not 
not about me. It's not about me as the head of school. It's about us. It's about um, us working together, uh, being congenial, collegial with one another, and always being ready to collaborate. So if that's you and you want to work in a learning community like that, uh, we would be excited to, to have you come join us. So um, in the next slide, we talk, we're talking just a little bit about who we are as a school. So we, as it, as it shows here we were founded in 2018 um and so we're we're still new we're still going into you know our our sixth year and um, only our third graduation our first graduates were in 2022 and we have are fully enrolled. So it means we have waiting lists um, for many, many of our classes. A few of our classes, it's, you know, there's a possibility, you know, for an opening here or there, um, especially for those um, candidates who have children. Um, we can usually find um, a place one or two um, in certain grade levels. But for the most part, we are we are full. And I will have later Dr. James speak about um, our graduates and about our graduating um, classes the last few years and our, our wonderful results. So if you go on to the next slide, um, we I want to talk just a little bit about our teachers. And we have um, teachers from all over the world, actually. We have teachers from many, many countries and from 25 different countries here at our school. Um, and sometimes people wonder like, how many teachers do you actually have? We're a big school, we're a really big school. So um, we have 178 teachers in total and 95 of those teachers are expat teachers. So we really have a strong um, teaching faculty that is expat. And one of the things that um, we have done on our campus to promote you know, social interaction and to promote um, more of that collegiality and congeniality piece is that we have teacher clubs. And these are not clubs that I say, oh, you must be in the club. But, you know, after school, we have teachers who have who have said, I will donate my time. I will volunteer to um, lead a badminton club. And we had 65 teachers who um, joined together for for badminton um, and exciting, you know, competing against one another. We have uh, teachers who play football on the weekends and they also compete against other international schools. And we have baking club and we have a club that does floristry and, you know, making, making um, flowers for different events. And you know, there's just so many, so many things that are happening on our campus um, for our teachers to build um, a family and um, a home away from home because I think that's one of the hardest things when teachers decide to go international. You know, I'm leaving my family, I'm leaving my people and who am I gonna know and, and am I gonna have any friends? And so for us, um, that's a very, very important part. Um, and also we work really hard. This is a very rigorous environment as you will see later. Our students go to the top universities in the world and you know, we're data driven and um, we're very, very systematic in the way we do things. And so it's important for our teachers to work hard, um, but then also have that time to play as well with one another. So in, I'd like to talk a little bit about our students. We have incredible students. And one of the things that um, in the, the slide in the beginning saying that we are primarily full and have waiting lists, we have um, over a thousand students. Um, we're you know, close, closer to you know, 1200, but, um, and we have an ECE program. We have a primary program, a middle school program, and a high school program. So we have students on our campus from the age of three all the way up to, you know, probably 18 to 19. And what's amazing is for us to see our older students volunteering and helping in our early years program and um, having that awareness and that understanding um, across the school and building leaders at different age levels um, to be able to support the other um, age levels at our school. So um, our students work really hard. They really do. Um, this is a, as I said, it's a very rigorous atmosphere, but at the same time, many opportunities for competitions. Um, for instance, we have students that are flying off to the U.S. Um, for world call, world, world to Yale to World Scholars Cup just now, just this week, and uh, we have students that are going to be going to Harvard for speech and debate competitions, and um, we have all kinds of after school activities and projects happening, community service. So not only are we a very very rigorous 
environment where our students are learning math even two years above grade level. And we have, as mentioned mentioned uh, many times, that we have students who who are at grade level and above grade level in their um, their reading and their language arts. But um, it's really important to us to also live by another motto. And I think you've seen that little elements of that as I've talked about the teachers. Um, we on our campus, we say that we work hard, we play fair and we love life. And I can actually say that um, that motto makes me very happy, not because of the motto itself, but actually seeing it and um, how it really changes our students' lives to know that not only can they work hard as a Chinese student and a Chinese culture, but they also can play fair. They can be a person who has strong core values and you know is caring and a person of in integrity, but they also, um, can have some fun along the way as well. So that's a really, really impar important part of our um, ethos and our culture at our school. Um, another thing is that we do have um, in incredible facilities. I know if you're comparing some of the other basis schools, um, you know, our facilities are not the same as the newest facilities. Our campus is a campus that was, um, um, the project was built by the, um, the Chinese government. So our campus uh, is smaller than many of the other campuses and not quite as new, but we do have many of the state of state of the art opportunities, as you can see, um, you know, we have our, we have, a, we have rooms for cooking and steam. We have the IT and the, uh, the rooms. We have an incredible gym and, you know, all the time we're um, every summer, the last couple of summers, we've renovated and made new opportunities for our students. So I can say that we, um, Maybe not the biggest and the, the shiniest of our campuses, but we have a cozy campus, a warm campus. And to me, that's what's most important, that when you walk, walk in the doors of, of the school, that you feel like you belong. And that's very, very important. Um, we are a community school and our um, facilities uh, rest right in the middle of the community, which is very different to many international schools in China. Lots of times international schools are built on the outskirts, you know, because they need the land. But this is an amazing, amazing campus that, you know, we have the high rise buildings all around us. We're one, just one block from the canal. So at lunch, you can just walk down to the canal and take take a walk along, along the water. Um, we have a beautiful outdoor space, as you can see. On the left-hand side of the picture is totally our early years building. Um, and there are gardens on the roof. And then if you see in the in the middle, um, it's our main campus building with our gym and our canteen and our library and all of our other um, great facilities, as well as gardens on the roof. Um, and then on the right hand side, you'll see more of our steam, our steam area and our um, engineering and all of um, those extra spaces. So we have a, a, a wonderful campus that um, is in the middle of the city again and much green space. So many times you don't find that on um, other campuses in China. So I'm going to talk then now just a little bit about our early years program. So in this next slide, we I, I'm just going to show you some pictures of some of our students and and play. You know, um, for me, uh, my background, I started out actually as an early years teacher um, over 30 years ago. And uh, my back, my um, education, first education was in early years and primary. Um, and so it's very, very important to me that we build a strong foundation um, from the age of, of three. And I've been fortunate to be able to work in some of the um, projects, curriculum projects to um, where our curriculum in early years is concerned across our whole network. So one of the things that I can actually say is that it is a transformative ECE education program. So if you decide to um, apply for our ECE program, um, just know that it's rigorous. It's just as rigorous as any of our other programs and it's high quality, but it's rigorous in a developmentally appropriate way. So those of you who are early years teachers will understand that. And, you know, people sometimes say, well, how do you do this? How can you do, how can you have a play-based based approach and it also be rigorous? How can you do it? You can do it by weaving in literacy into your role play and into your play and making sure that you're teaching to the standards. So we have things like I can statements. And then those I can statements um, are, um, 
objectives and student outcomes linked to what we do. So to be honest, the approach is intensive and intentional. And I think sometimes people um, fear coming to an early years program in China that it should it will be all worksheets and we have to sit and memorize and that it's not progressive. But I just wanted to let you know that it is very progressive and um, we would be excited um, to be able to share more with you about our ECE program. Well, actually now I'm going to pass along the um, to Sean Sterling, who is our vice head of primary, and she's going to talk to you a little bit more about our primary program. Good morning, and thank you, Ms. Skylis, for that wonderful introduction. Um, good day to you all. Um, as Ms. Skylis said, I am Shauna Sterling. I am the vice head of primary here at the beautiful, beautiful campus of Basis Hangzhou, um, as well as the ELL coordinator and chair for our ELL program. Um, I just want to give you a little bit um, of my background. I am from America. Um, this is my 26th year in the education field, all which have been in uh, primary and my initial year of teaching was um, in ECE, um, as Ms. Kylis was. Um, I have traveled all around the world and I've also lived all around the world. Some of the countries that I've lived in um, to include China or America, Germany, um, and Italy. So um, quite a bit of experience with, with traveling around abroad and, and um, seeing the world and getting to know um, lots of other people. A little bit about my work journey since I arrived here on campus. Um, I was hired as an ELL teacher. Um, which is also my background, which I've, you know, very familiar with and working in the ELL program in the past. Um, I was then promoted to ELL chair to oversee all of the ELL teachers and how we do our push in and pull out support program here. And then um, in my second year here, I was provided the opportunity um, to uh, become vice head of primary. Um, the basis network truly saw my passion they saw my experience, my adaptability, my collegial attitude all, to, all around campus, um, my collaborative um, um, teamwork and, and, and mentoring that I had. And they gave me the opportunity to advance to vice head of primary, which I'm very, very thankful for. I can truly say that I have found my home, I found my happiness, and I have personally seen my growth mindset flourish to a whole new levels that I would have never expected. Um, now, just a little bit about the primary division um, and what it looks like. Um, our students are developing a growth mindset each and every day with the understanding that they are the future leaders of the world. They're becoming critical thinkers and critical problem solvers each and every day. We do have a very rigorous learning environment and curriculum, just like Ms. Skyla said, um, but they adapt very well. We have the expert expat teachers here to guide them along the way each and every day to adapt to this very rigorous curriculum that we have. Um, we have a new EL um, humanities program, which will be on the next slide. And this EL curriculum is um, targeted and individualized. Um, and it's a meaningful and learning program that will allow students to dive into their real world education. Um, when students and teachers are engaged in this challenging and adventurous program, learning and achievement flourishes. Um, it allows students to think more than they ever have. It allows students to reach their highest aspirations and students can achieve and become active contributors to building a better world. Um, as you see here on the screen, creating classrooms where students can do more than they can, think above what they can think above, and become um, that active contributor will be a part of helping to build the better world that we all live in. And we all know that this 21st century world that we live in is a challenging one. So this rigorous new EL curriculum um, definitely um, will build their character as well. Um, some of the key target areas for our new curriculum are mastery of student knowledge, which you see on our next screen, skills, character, building character, and high quality of student work. Also embedded in our EL curriculum, we have our ELL strategies. As I mentioned, I am the ELL chair. 
um, where we're targeting and individualizing small groups with instructions that will help strengthen and support the English and build reading skills. So not only allowing our students to um, build their characters and become mastery of the knowledge and previous knowledge and skills that they're learning, um, but also to show that good quality, strong student work and become strong, independent, core English speakers and readers. And again, these ELL strategies are deeply embedded um, in our new EL uh, curriculum. This has become my home, you know, my, my um, acceleration of my career from teacher to vice head, um, the be beautiful city that we live in. Uh, my professional development and my growth mindset that is growing each and every day just continues to make me um, a better person personally and a better person professionally. Um, so overall, this is a beautiful, beautiful, uh, wonderful place to work, to grow professionally, meet new and exciting people, um, engage and help grow with our new students here, be a part of an amazing community and work within a great network of basis. Um, and to live in such a beautiful city, the city that I was told as um, the Emerald City of China. And I must admit, it truly is the Emerald City of China. I thank you very much for your time. And I look forward to seeing you all and meeting you all soon. I will now pass you on to Dr. Bryn James, our head of high school and our vice head of basis international hung Show. thank you okay um thank you very much shauna so um my name is uh, dr Bryn james i have worked uh with the basis network now for seven years um, i'm originally from the uk and my background is in academia um, i'm actually an archaeologist by training and i worked at the university of manchester before moving into education uh with king's college london um, I worked with government schools in London, uh, in Hounslow and in Lambeth, uh, where I was a history teacher and also a middle leader with a focus on research. Um, after Brexit, I kind of decided to look internationally a little bit and was headhunted to come and work with the Basis China Network um, and came over to uh, Guangdong in the south of China to found the Guangzhou School just outside Hong Kong. Um, I did a year there uh, in the history department, and I then moved uh, to Basis Hangzhou as part of the founding team there uh, as a pastoral middle leader. Um, it's now my sixth year with the Basis Hangzhou School, and in that time I've moved up uh, from being a pastoral middle leader to helping to build the AP program in the high school, then moving on uh, to be the head of the middle school and the high school, uh, to my current position as uh, vice head of school and remaining as the head of the high school. Uh, you know, during my time here, I've also been able to continue doing trainings. So, for example, I recently completed uh, an NPQ in senior leadership with the Best Practice Network, and I'm in fact just starting my NPQ in headship again with the Best Practice Network. Um, my main kind of job today, though, is to talk uh, you through the middle school and the high school program a little bit. So our middle school and high school program is based on uh, the U.S. curriculum, uh, but is bespoke. Um, in the middle school, our students are building a really strong foundation to get them ready for the advanced placement program in the high school. So in the middle school, our goal is for students to begin to find their passion across the core subjects and across electives. Our students in the middle school um, are now all uh, on average at or above uh, their grade level, English level, as measured by MAP. And so that means that they can really make the most of the accelerated curriculum. Um, all of the students are working at least uh, two years ahead of the grade level. And in fact, in math, they might even be well beyond that. For example, a grade eight student could be in um, pre-calculus AB, which, which is a college level uh, math course. So uh, you can see here lots of photos of uh, our students kind of at graduation or doing different electives or at some of our events. Uh, the goal in the high school program in particular is to support our students through 
over four years, the US college admissions process. So we have um, a kind of theme in the high school of passion, purpose, and perseverance. What we really want is for students in grade nine and grade 10 to be um, exploring different things, to be doing different electives, different courses, and finding what they're passionate about. And then in grade 10 or grade 11, for them to convert some of those passions into purpose. What are the things that they would really like to be doing in school, in college, in later life? Um, if there is a student who's really passionate about the humanities, you know, we will uh, support them towards special electives in the humanities. If there's a student who's a very keen scientist, we'll support them towards finding uh, particular competitions or research projects that they can go much more deeply into. Um, and then, of course, in grade 11, grade 12, it becomes about perseverance. Um, the AP program, the U.S. College Admissions process, uh, is demanding for high achieving students. They're really asked and expected to stretch themselves and to try to do more and be more. And so our role then is to support them to persevere with their interests over multiple years, to persevere with competitions they might be involved with over multiple years, to persevere with any research projects that they've involved themselves with uh, in the longer term, to be aiming for publications and peer-reviewed journals. If they're a science student, to be aiming to get their own patents. Um, and the goal is for our students to self-actualize and to kind of discover what it is about learning and making things and creating things that really leads them to feeling fulfilled. So the framework of curriculum that we have to support that is primarily based upon the US Advanced Placement Program. We have uh, one of the most developed advanced placement programs of any international school in China. We actually offer, I think, 30 uh, or more advanced placement programs, everything from uh, you know, AP Calculus AB to world history to the sciences through to courses such as Latin, computer science, human geography. Um, the only aspect of the AP program that we don't fully offer here is modern foreign languages. And that is because all of our students every day are taking an English class and a Chinese class. There's a strong element of choice to our high school program. So students do have to do core classes, but as they move uh, through the high school, they have more and more choice as to what they're doing. Um, they must take a history course every year. So they start with world history, uh, then European history, then US history. Uh, they must take an English course every year. But as they move through, they have more and more choice and they make their program bespoke, which, of course, helps a lot with engagement. Um, every single day, they choose their first and last period class of the day where they have an elective and they can do anything from art, drama, filmmaking, uh, you know, through to uh, robotics, computer science, uh, Latin. It's really uh, up to them. And we will provide, uh, you know, specialist teaching and small group classes for the students in terms of those specialist electives. Uh, we're particularly interested in terms of recruitment for the middle school and the high school in finding teachers who are genuine subject experts with a real passion for their subject, who, you know, not only want to inspire students in their core classes, but in fact, perhaps in, you know, their second or third year of their contract, build a specialist bespoke college level course for the students. Um, these are the kinds of courses which for, you know, our grade 11, grade 12s, uh, you know, might be really tailored towards what they want to then go off and do in college. Uh, and, you know, many of our more experienced teachers find themselves spending time over multiple years going deeper and deeper with particular students who they've developed a strong bond with. Um, in the bottom left of the picture, under the words upper school, you can see one of our recent graduates, uh, a student called Tony, who was a very passionate uh, scientist. He joined the school with an interest in beetles. He liked entomology. And over four years, he went all the way through the science program. We built bespoke classes for him. He did all kinds of competitions and research programs. Um, and then, you know, at the end, he was, you know, very fortunate to get offers from uh, Berkeley's, UCLA. Um, in the end, went to Williams College, which is the number one liberal arts college, in fact, um, where I think he he's now being very successful. Um, 
College admissions is obviously something that we're very serious about for our students. We have an accelerated program. We have uh, students who are very highly motivated. And so our goal really is to get uh, you know, as many of our students as possible into at least a US top 30 college or global equivalent. Um, and in fact, you know, with only two graduating year groups so far, we're already seeing success beyond that. Um, our class of 2023 has students admitted to Cambridge, Ivy Leagues like Cornell, Berkeley, UCLA, um, Johns Hopkins, which is uh, the US's leading uh, science university, Duke, um, NYU. So uh, we really do mean it when we say that we are trying to build uh, students who are global leaders. Uh, we see ourselves actually as a bridge between China and the world. And we're looking for teachers who can inspire, motivate, support our students to really go beyond the norm. Um, it's not just about our students getting good exam results or doing interesting extracurriculars. It's about them finding things they're really passionate and excited about. And even before they get to college, um, producing things which are of value to the world. So um, if we move on one more slide, please, Tim. One of the ways in which we try to ensure that our teachers are best able to support our students is by having a really genuine learning community. Um, at least two thirds of our staff at any one time are doing some form of sustained certified professional development. We provide a lot of support for that. We provide in-school mentoring. Uh, we have partners that we work with, such as TES and the Best Practice Network to offer everything from PGCEs to QTS to NPQs. Um, we have many, many teachers completing masters in education, master in education leadership, subject specialist masters, um, and they are at great universities. We have uh, the teachers completing masters at the University of Oxford, um, at Harvard School of Education, and there is support for this. Teachers have some time off timetable if they need it. Uh, we have PD grants and we have uh, cohorts of teachers working through these programs uh, year on year. Uh, we also have quite a lot of time for professional development with departments and divisions. Uh, and that will often be guided by not only network priorities, but by what teachers themselves want to be working on. Uh, we try and make sure that we've got uh, a good level of support for this in terms of things that we're doing in school uh, and especially, you know, for people who might have a particular, uh, you know, long term career plan and want to get a certification whilst they're here. I think that one of the big selling points of the school is the city. Um, Hangzhou is uh, an incredibly beautiful city and it's a very important part, actually, of the story of China and, in fact, China in the world. Uh, so Hangzhou historically was the capital of the Southern Song Dynasty. When the Mongols took over northern China, uh, you know, the Chinese rulers, elite, all moved south and they settled in Hangzhou. Hangzhou is in East China. It's about 40 minutes outside of Shanghai. It's a coastal city and it has very uh, strong links to the Grand Canal network. It's one of the terminuses of the Grand Canal. Hangzhou was the city that Marco Polo famously visited and said was the most beautiful city in the world and compared it to Vin Venice with all the canals. Um, more recently, Hangzhou has been revitalized as a center of the Chinese tech industry. So many of China's very big um, tech companies, such as um, Alibaba, Tencent, NetEase, have their headquarters here. Many of our students are the children of uh, the executives, the engineers, uh, the coders at these different companies. Hangzhou also has uh, Zhejiang University, which is one of the biggest universities in China and now, in fact, very rapidly moving up global rankings. Um, and importantly, Hangzhou is a model city. It is a city which is often used to host outward facing events. So the G20 was here a couple of years ago. We've just finished hosting the Asian Games and, in fact, Looking out the window, I can see one of the Asian Games stadiums. Um, and we're right in the center. We are adjacent to the river. We are a couple of kilometers away from Hangzhou's famous West Lake. And so you can, you know, kind of leave the school gates and, you know, be, be right in the mix of things in the city, which is a big difference, in fact, from most 
uh, international schools in China or elsewhere, which are typically built on the outskirts and require you then to spend a long time traveling into the city if you want to go and do something nice. Um, Hangzhou is also a garden city. So alongside all of the developments, there's been a lot of attention paid to um, the beautification of the city. Again, you could take a short taxi ride and suddenly find yourself in the hills, in the tea villages, you know, in landscapes which are, uh, you know, incredibly beautiful and very natural and peaceful. So, um, yeah, some of the things I appreciate about Hangzhou are the culture, the history, uh, you know, the vibrant city life, and of course the fact that you can just go for a walk in the countryside and, and actually only be, you know, a short taxi drive away from the school. Uh, so thank you very much, Tim. I think I've run through all my bits and pieces uh, and I will hand back over to Saba, who's going to talk about the experience of a new teacher in our school. Hello. Good morning, everyone. My name is Saba Amir and I am one of the middle school biology and chemistry teacher here at Basis International Hangzhou. Uh, I'm here today to share my experiences and journey with Basis. So other prospective teachers just going to listen to my story and we're going to get some inspiration. And I really want to tell them that there are so many incredible opportunities uh, which Basis is going to offer to them. So uh, before I start with my experience at Basis, I want to tell a little bit about my background. I am from UK. I just studied uh, chemistry, pharmaceutical chemistry. And then after that, I did my PGCE from University of East London. I was teaching at one of the public school at um, Essex. And from last six years, I'm teaching there. Then I've decided to just go a little bit international. I just want to travel around the world. So I was looking for jobs and then I got an interview from bases from the very first interaction i just felt the warmth and friendliness from the individuals i encountered so i just i i knew already that i am looking at the right place um after the after the the interview process when i got my offer i was a bit reluctant to move because i'm a mom and i have a young family with me so i was a bit reluctant about the air quality and because we were moving from a countryside and i heard that the hangzhou is really a big city so i was a bit reluctant about it but believe me or not, my family is very, very subtle here. It's just settled very seamlessly here because Hangzhou is a blend of an urban life. And there are so many different places where you can enjoy nature as well uh, here in Hangzhou. Um, I moved here with my husband and with two children. My son is one year old and my daughter is eight years old. My daughter also joined the school. And she's in grade three at Bases International here. She is loving her school days and she just enjoyed each and every event at the school. Uh, we had like Halloween party last week and she is just over the moon there. She was so, so excited about all the events here at the school. So I'm very, very delighted to share that my child is very settled here in her school um, at, at Bases International Hangzhou. Um, another thing I would say is the, um, the, the transition from a countryside to an urban life. Uh, it's, it's very seamless for us and it's remarkably easy for us because our HR department here at Bases International it's so so well organized they are extremely helpful so they they just help me with everything from document preparation for visa applications for work permit for for each and every step they were there with me so they helped me to 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 go through that very difficult process of visas and everything um the the picked me from the airport as well as well when I arrived here and then they set everything up for me the housing is 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 fabulous here so I got a, an apartment which is really suitable for our needs um they set internet up for me they just took me for the medical checks and they set up the bank accounts so you just name it and you got the help there and uh, all of my expat teachers and all of my Chinese teachers here, all of them are so, so helpful. You just need to tell your problem and then they are there for helping you. They just go to an extra mile for, 
for helping you in each and every problem. So another very incredible thing is the Chengdu trip. And we went there for the Summer Institute. Um, that's that's actually an amazing, amazing journey for me. Uh, we went to an amazing hotel with a beautiful garden party. But what makes it more remarkable is to meet with another, with other um, educators, with other brilliant teachers there. So it's a, it's a very good opportunity to socialize with like-minded people. Um, and it just gave me an insight into the basis curriculum, just give me, the, give me an insight about the basis um, of work life and all the different um, things, all the trainings, presentations, all of them were so well planned that I just got an idea like how basic schools work and how uh, is how are we going to fit into that whole basis pic picture. And I also felt really valued there because uh, the way they treated us with so much respect and just helped us to understand all the little bit and things about curriculum, about life, about the uh, about all the different things about the basis network. It it was remarkable remor remarkable experience for me. Um, I we're gonna just thank you for your time today. And if you got any questions, I'm more than happy to answer all the questions you might have. Um, thank you so much for your time. Well, thanks for sharing your insights and I appreciate everything you've been able to share with us so far. Um, I'm gonna share a little bit about uh, insights in general about teaching with basis international schools. Um, as a network, as it's mentioned, you know, we are one of the top networks of international schools in China. And um, some things that we want to share with you that is fairly unique and what makes our organization unique. Certainly, um, number one is our curriculum. Um, the Basis Curriculum Schools Network does comprise of 13 international schools uh, across, uh, across the world. Um, you can see here our campuses in China. We do have two new campuses that will be opening up for the next year as well. And in addition to that, we do have six uh, schools, <clears throat> uh, independent schools in, in the United States. In terms of the curriculum that we do share across the organization, it's really creating a unique uh, classroom environment. I think a lot of that has been shared, so I'm not going to delve too deeply into some of these pieces, but the curriculum has been developed collaboratively over the last 26 years. It's a living curriculum. It's something that we continue to develop we're always looking for new ways to enhance how the students are able to learn, how they're able to engage and participate in the learning process. As was mentioned, it's AP curriculum in the high school. Um, it's not just, you know, we work up to AP, but it's kind of infused and we even go beyond AP, as Dr. James had shared. Middle school, it's a liberal arts curriculum, really looking to set the foundations, uh, building the, a learning mindset, as well as um, we do have a, a unique co-teaching model in the primary grades that really facilitates collaboration as well as having subject-based teachers focus on key subjects. And then also what we have, uh, what we call our learning enhancement teachers that really focus on the individual needs of students. And so collaboratively, individual needs of students are met while also having um, uh, engaging, interesting lessons for teachers able to focus on specific subjects. And lastly, um, Kara uh, Galis did talk about the, uh, the play-based learning that we do have in ECE, but it is, it's an accelerated curriculum. Um, we kind of call it an AP-infused liberal arts curriculum, uh, really setting great foundations and helping students just build that love of learning in a, uh, a very uh, intellectually stimulating environment. Something else that, that is very unique is that we do have a partnership. We have a, an exclusive partnership with UC Berkeley. The Berkeley Global Program is uh, set up where across our schools, uh, including our school in Hangzhou, students are able to participate in Berkeley accredited courses to where they can receive Berkeley credit. They actually do receive a, a transcript from uh, UC Berkeley, which is one of the top uh, universities, uh, if not the top public university in the world. Um, so that's a, it's a unique uh, collaboration that we do have that students are able to participate in. Berkeley has selected basis national schools in China for that partnership because there's some very similar uh, mindset in terms of a high level of intellectual learning, innovation, and um, really looking to build a global mindset within our students. In terms of then what that uh, means uh, for outcomes, the, uh, the results have been outstanding, particularly in the college acceptances. Again, Dr. James spoke to some of these, but as a network as a whole, we've had over 92% of our students accepted into the top 50 programs, over 60% uh, 
Um, 63% since this last year accepted into top 30 universities globally. It includes uh, schools like Boston, Cornell, Duke, Harvard, Imperial College of London, MIT, uh, UCLA, Chicago, Oxford, University of Toronto, as well as some of the top arts programs uh, around the world, including Rhode Island School of Design. So for a few more specific insights relative to what it's like teaching with our schools, I would like to bring in my colleague, Leila Oskui. Leila, again, is an international recruiter that works particularly with our school in Hangzhou. So Leila, looking forward to some of your insights on uh, what teaching means. Thank you so much. I um I won't take too up too much time so that I don't um cover things that have already been covered, but I'll touch on a few extra things. Um, why teach with Basis International Schools? I think um Kira, Shauna, Bryn, and Saba already touched on a lot of of the these points from their first person perspective, but it truly is a very collaborative learning environment. You're when you work at a basis school and basis Hangzhou, um, you're working with some of the best of the best. And I always, my favorite thing is when I talk to a candidate or talk to a teacher, I go like, oh my gosh, they're just so basis. And it's kind of hard to put your finger on uh, exactly what that is until you talk to a basis teacher. And they're just so, they're passionate, they're unique. Um, they often have really cool hobbies and things that they bring into this environment. It's, it's a very dynamic, fun environment, and Hangzhou in particular, um, I know Kira said it as well, as corny as it, it may sound, and teachers have said this as well, it actually is alive and well at their school. Um, very high expectations of our students, which means we do have high expectations of our teachers. Um, the, the network, we've been opening one to two new schools um, every year since the inception of Basis International Schools and very successfully, might I add, um, we are, are quite well known for the success that we've achieved and the what, what the future has in hold for us. So strong network is obviously really important. And the students, um, Kira spoke about this as well, but the students are great. They're so interesting. I could sit and talk to the students for forever about the things that are interesting to them. So as a teacher, you will be teaching some very interesting kids, passionate, driven, um, and it's it's very fulfilling. So um, actually, both, both Sean and Saba um, spoke about the um, HR support um, I like this photo because it's a welcome back that they, their HR had um, waiting for, I, I'm not sure which specific teacher, if it's any of the ones that are in this presentation, but um, the teacher had this waiting for them when they got into their apartment straight off the, the airplane. Um, they think of everything, really, like things that I wouldn't have even thought of for myself moving abroad, they've thought of it. Uh, they're incredible individuals, incredible people, and they are very good at their job. So um, airport pickup, when I go to China, I'm always greeted by someone from HR picking me up from the airport as well, which is really nice. Um, they prepare their housing, um, very lovely apartments as well. Again, making sure that there's especially like Western accommodations that maybe they isn't typical um, for someone Chinese or someone in Asia, but they, they make it comfortable living quarters for our teachers and really set up for success. There's some apps in China that are very unique to China only. Um, they pay through everything via apps now. Some places I tried to give my card and they're like, no, we need your app. So that could be difficult to adjust to when everything is on your phone. And the HR really makes sure kind of, I think they give like trainings to the teachers on how to live in China. Um, so they think of everything. It's really great. Why teach in China? So um, this is my favorite thing because I think China is this um, enigma that is sensationalized in a lot of different ways. But when boots on the ground there, it's actually quite lovely. It's very convenient. It's very modern. Teachers, once they, once they you know, go there, they're like, wow, we can really live here forever. A lot of people that I know um, a lot of teachers in Hangzhou actually have lived there for a long time. Um, 
Britain has been there for a while now. Um, Sean and Saba are, are both new and Kira has been there for, I think, yeah, four, in her fourth year now. Um, families live there. Like Saba has her whole family there as well. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a really great place to live. Education is valued. So if you're a teacher who's teaching in a country or in a school where it maybe is less valued and it can be quite taxing being a teacher and I'm sure some of you will know what I mean um it is very very valued in China by both the students and and their parents as well and that's felt in our schools it is a very rich culture although it's modern and technological it is still a thousands of years old country that is rich in culture and that's um quite present in Hangzhou specifically as well you can have like this old building right next to a modern skyscraper and it's really cool cost of living so I think Bryn can probably speak he has some really good points to speak about um with regards to cost of living in China um cost of living is quite low and um I can speak to basis specifically our package is um quite nice in that you can live very comfortably and I know a lot of teachers let's say you're a single person only yourself like you can live quite a nice bourgeois life on the salary and still have a lot of money for savings and for families as well it's very comfortable living you can support your whole family on um one salary in in most cases and I don't want to speak for everyone but living in China is quite um a financially lucrative um, decision for some people. Speaking of the package, so we do provide airfare to China as well as moving allowances for you and your family. Annual return, we call it return home allowance. You don't necessarily need to use it to return home every year. Some teachers just use it to travel. Um, visa support, um, global health coverage, which for U.S. citizens does cover the United States. So if you do go back home to visit, um, you don't need to cross your fingers about not using the doctor like I used to when I lived abroad and you will be covered. Um, you have tuition for up to two children. So um, Saba's daughter actually gets to go to basis for free and she has this experience um, for free. Not that her daughter knows that, but Saba definitely <laughs> probably feels that. Free meals at school for teachers and students alike. Fully paid furnished housing. Um, housing allowance is optional in some um, in some cities. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's option, uh, it is an option in Hangzhou because there's a little bit more housing options there. Um, and retirement bonus. I mean, people, I think they go abroad and they forget that they need to save for retirement someday. So we do provide 10% retirement benefit, completion bonuses, and they do um, have additional bonuses um, each year. We do have a three-year contract, by the way, um, so I do like to make sure people know that it is um, it is a commitment. Those three years go by very quickly. And we do actually have fantastic retention. We're just going through renewals and um, I'll let I'll, I'll let maybe Kira speak about it. But they had some um, they're having some some great renewal um, uh, rates at this point. A lot of people want to come back to Hangzhou. So very quickly requirements. We do require a degree in your teaching subject. So what that means is in, in primary, that means a degree in um, primary education, elementary education, childhood development, something like that. If you are applying for a math teaching position, that means that your degree needs to be related to mathematics and so on with the other subjects. Um, ECE obviously will be early childhood development. Um, so we do look at the degree specific to the subject that you're applying for. Um, at least two years of full-time lead in-class teaching experience, uh, obviously passion for teaching, willingness to collaborate and elevate your teaching with your colleagues. Hangzhou, obviously, you can tell that they're a very collegial, collaborative community there. Um, high academic standards, work hard. Um, what is it? Work hard, play fair, love life in Hangzhou. Um, ability to engage young minds. And of course, there are some visa restrictions. Um, it does sometimes differ province to province. So we can obviously talk with you. And we mentioned that HR is great, so they can support with that. A couple things to keep in mind. Um, our school, uh, Basis International Hangzhou is an international school. 
What that means is students need to have a foreign passport to apply to that or to, to enroll into that school. Most of the student population, though, is local students, meaning that they do are they are of Chinese heritage and they mostly speak um, uh, some dialect of Chinese at home. So English is primarily a second language for our students. Um, so do do keep that in mind. It's not going to be an international school where we have students from multiple international schools. It is primarily local students. Flexibility is important. Our schools are newer and growing. I think Tim mentioned that this is a live and living curriculum. The EL curriculum is uh, very new to us and has just been um, adopted and is slowly and is quickly being adapted. And then the ECE program, um, the, the play-based um, rigorous play-based, um, intentional play-based learning curriculum is new as well. So flexibility is important. And if you have accompanying students, um, they should be ready for a basis education. Again, Saba can probably talk about this. Her daughter is on the younger side. She's in third grade. So it's a little bit easier for younger students to adapt to a basis curriculum. That's not to say it's not still difficult. Once you have a student who's a little bit older, when I say older, I mean fourth, fifth, starting to get in sixth grade middle school, it, it becomes quite intense for that student because of the accelerated program. Um, we'd love to have your students at our school, but it is also a family you know, decision. So I like to let people know that ahead of time. All right, and that is about it for me. No more of my voice. Um, I, we have a career site. We do have a blog and we have, um, I think I mentioned it in the answers on the, the live answers, but we have a talent community where you can um, sign up to receive tailored uh, job suggestions, um, stay updated on our insights, the network wide insights, blogs, videos. Um, on our blog, we have um, teacher um, experiences, um, what the schools are like. Uh, Kira Gailis has um, a Meet the Head of School on there. You can read a little bit more about her very, very interesting background um, and apply online. We have a lot of social media presence as well. So I'm happy for you to engage with us on social and apply online. Okay, now that's really the end of my voice. I will open it up to everyone now. Thanks, Layla. Appreciate that. We'll move on to the Q&A part of our presentation. <clears throat> so we'll welcome our uh, panelists back and uh, we'll go through some of the questions. So Leila, if you want to maybe run through the questions that we do have and then um, maybe we can identify who would be the best person to answer the question across the panelists. So I do have um, one question um, so far. With the three-year contract, is the salary locked for those three years or is there a pos possibility for increases during the contract? Kira or Bryn, would you be able to uh, fill that? Mm -hmm. uh, I can answer that. Or do you want to answer that, Kira? I can go for it. Um, yes, it is a three-year contract, but there is possibility from the second to the third year to receive an increase in salary. It is, it is written in the contract, the amount of increase. And, and to add to that, um, there are also um, uplift opportunities as well for staff. So for example, you know, um, if you're doing a good job, then you could receive a promotion to a middle leadership responsibility, such as a curriculum advisor, a subject advisor, maybe a chair of department. Um, and then there are other additional opportunities, such as running a club, which is stipended, uh, being involved in an athletics team, which is stipended. And then you can do things like open days, admissions days, which all come with additional stipends on top. I wanted to add one experience real quick. Uh, when I visited Hangzhou and Bryn was so gracious to walk us all the way right across the street to a bakery. And uh, we enjoyed a nice, well, I had a lot of I had a lot of baked goods there that were really delicious, but um, really is in the middle of the city and uh, a lot of options around the school as well that I just wanted to, to point out from personal experience. Um, when is the hiring time schedule of the basis international schools? Um, I can answer that. So we are um, very active in interviewing starting now already. 
Um, there are some cases where our renewal process is not um, officially complete until mid-November. So um, we may have additional positions posted thereafter, but due to growth in some of our schools, we do have positions posted now that we are very actively interviewing for. I know Hangzhou does have um, a very small handful of positions that they're hiring for for next year as well. So I encourage you to apply online. Um, question, um, can you explain more about the EL program? How does it differ from other primary curriculum? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, okay, sure. The EL curriculum, um, as I said earlier, it's very rigorous um, um, program. It's a Harvard-based research program. So I would say the difference between this EL curriculum versus other um, humanities or English-based curriculums that I personally have um, taught and, and, and um, dealt with in the past is it allows the students to be more interactive, more engaging, uh, lots of real-world research projects, and it allows the students to have a voice, and they are the center of their learning. Yes, we do have the curriculum. We have four very solid, very rigorous, very fun um, modules that we have throughout the year but it allows the students to take ownership. Um, and um, ultimately, not, not to develop the curriculum, but to have, to have a say-so. You know, like I said, we have the, the, the standards that we follow, but it allows them to be one and, and do their personal research and, and have a voice with the learning that's taking place. I can also talk from the teacher perspective. And so EL education uh, has a plethora of resources. And so, you know, any teacher who feels like, oh, this is a new, this is new, I don't know, don't worry, don't worry. The right. training programs, the support that you receive on every campus through your chair um, and also through Summer Institute, and as well as receiving the resources far in advance um, so that you can can begin to just think about what your modules are gonna look like. And, um, you know, there's built-in planning time in our schools as well. So um, the nice thing is, is that you're given um, resources that help you plan according to uh, standards, but at the same time, giving children the opportunity to be masters of their own learning, which is amazing. The two together um, really helps our students to succeed. Um, one more question. Uh, can we provide some examples of what is taught in middle school to help people get an idea of what the curriculum is like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can answer that. And so um, in the middle school, the students have their core classes. So English, math, history, Chinese. They do all three sciences, although they only do those on a three day a week basis. Um, in grade eight, they also have economics. Uh, and then the students alongside have uh, some electives classes, ICT classes, and everything else. But the, the focus in the middle school is very much on building a core foundation. Um, and then, you know, certain classes, for example, the math classes are streamed, uh, whereas everything else they move through uh, by grade level in their element groups. So there is a homeroom element to an extent. The students meet each day uh, before or after lunch for um, a homeroom class for about 25 minutes. Uh, but yeah, the focus is very much on them, uh, you know, building their skills through the core classes. Thank you. Um... That is all the questions that are in here. Oh. Well, I will add, uh, you know, we had the pleasure of um, uh, visiting the school just a few weeks ago. And uh, one thing that I can absolutely confirm that Carrie had mentioned is uh, it really is a very warm school environment. One thing I, that really stood out to me and I was impressed with is how, um, you know, so many of the teachers talked about the culture of the school and how it's uh, just really embedded in the school and it's really live. It's not just something that, uh, you know, is a saying on the wall, but it's something that's really live. And so um, I really felt the warmth of the school there. And I appreciated uh, the chance to visit a few weeks ago. Very live with um, student works, photos of student performances and activities and just very colorful and just, like you, you feel like you're in a, a very warm, 
school that celebrates their students and their teachers. So really, really great campus. Thank you. Nice we enjoyed having you. We we really <laughs> did. We, we, we enjoyed sharing just a little bit of our culture with you. And we'll be excited to share that with um, possible candidates as well. The next time I come, I'm looking forward to joining in on the uh, uh, the, the faculty badminton club and uh, and participating in the fruits of the cooking club. Okay, we we, we can we can we can help you with that one, Tim. <laughs> great. Well, thanks so much for uh, for joining us today and sharing the insights. It's been great to hear more about your school and uh, some of what the uh, prospective candidates um, uh, can experience and anticipate. Uh, in, in knowing a little bit more about the Basis National School Hangzhou. So thank you for your time and your input, and I look forward to seeing you soon again.